Hey viewers, marriage is as old as humanity. Have you ever thought of what is marriage? How does marriage come into existence and how is it conducted? How is marriage regarded and regulated by domestic laws in the Republic of Kenya? This is the point. If today you were to get married in Kenya, what should you know and what must you know concerning the family law and the marriage act? Today I would like to begin by the reading of this beautiful and incredible publication authored by Barry Nicholas. Uh, it is entitled An Introduction to Roman Law. However, still, we need to look at this book with open mind, not narrow mind, in order to understand what it entails. The reason for which I love to read this book is simple. It is because we always misunderstand and misrepresent the African customary law. We always fall into the trap of the colonial legacies and the Western civilization, including the international human rights principles when it comes to the African customary law. In most often, uh, we tend to question ourselves, where exactly do we collocate the African customary law? created by the colonizers, or it was there before the arrival at the historical point of the European days. We need to engage our thoughts with the family law as understood by the Romans and the marriage law as understood by the Romans. Inside this book, marriage is considered and uh, use ad personam, that is personal law, in which we find such concepts as the dos, donatio, dos and donatio inform the etymology of the dowry as we know it from the anglophone perspective. The francophone perspective use la dot, it is not far from the doors. Well, apart from all this, our interest here is family law and marriage. The Romans were aware of the practice and the use of the donatio as the exchange of precious gifts was already in practice among the Roman citizens. However, what is it? It is a sign of the bridegroom and the bride and the exchange of gifts or tokens between the families and between the marrying parties. In that case, it was not in terms of animals, but it was in terms of some commodities that were of value, such things like gold, which was a rare commodity, bronze, silver, or any other artifact that was considered of high value by the people. This was done first to appreciate the bride by the bridegroom. Second, it was done to ensure some legal force or the force of law that is the bond between the husband and the wife. According to the Romans, and as per this publication, the married woman was not considered a free citizen. She was considered as sharing equal rights with the children. And in that case, there was a period of time given or allocated at the marriage, after of which the woman would be given Manusipatio. Manusipatio is emancipation or 
the person would be a free citizen. And from that time henceforth, the woman would be considered free. And in that case, she could engage in another maybe relationship of some kind. That much is telling us about the Roman conception of marriage. How about the African conception? <laughs> well, I can't say that the Romans had known Africa because for the Romans, Africa was considered the dark part of the world. That is the way they were looking at Africana and Homo Africanus. The African man was not only defined because of the color of the skin, but he was defined by the concept that that part of the world, the people living there, the culture of the people there, the concepts, the civilization of the people there was unknown to the most powerful empire on earth, the Roman Empire. It is from the Lex Romana or the Roman law that we can engage our thinking with the African customary law, the African customary marriages. Were the Africans aware of certain concepts? Of course, yes. Dowry was already in existence and the practice was very important and binding. In the oral traditions, in which the registration of marriages was non-existent. Agreements and such contracts, civil contracts, would be done customarily and the people were well aware in different kingdoms and empires in Africa. It is from this perspective we see that dowry from the English translation, the Francophone, or the common law jurisprudence is translated into different languages. The Francophones refer to it as la dot to demonstrate the same concept of the dos and the donatio, the tokens among the Romans. Still the dowry. The dowry is an institution within the customary marriages, not only in Africa, but even beyond. India in 1961 made a very outrageous and curious, ambitious attempt to abolish dowry by Dowry Prohibition Act, which became unpopular because it did not meet the expectations of the law. That is just a small glimpse of the iceberg when it comes to marriage. Marriage is an institution. It involves the two marrying parties, but in Africa, marriage was also a communal issue in which the parties and their communities were engaged in such important process through which the celebration of the marriage was taking place. The union between the husband and the wife was considered a bond that was tying the two. That is taking us back to the Roman conception of the doors and the donatio. But Africans, I stand to be corrected, did not have the concept of enslaving the wife or regarding the wife at the level of the children when it comes to the rights. This is something we need still to find out. Africans used animals simply because animals defined the wealth of, of the person as individuals and uh, of communities. This was considered something of high value maybe cows, a ram, a goat, or perhaps camels or donkeys. Such exchange of goods 
uh, in uh, uh, patrilineal kind of system. It is the bridegroom and his community to secure bride wealth or bride. And in that case, the bride is given to the family of the bride. The bridegroom would take pride as well as the bride taking pride of being more appreciated, being more accepted by the community. And this is very significant in the African customary marriages. However, still, it was in appreciation, the same to the Roman context, but also it was legally binding in both the Roman context and the African context. In the African customary law perspective, the exchange of goods in terms of animals would express something long lasting or something lasting forever or for life because of the life of the animal. It may sound symbolic, but it is very significant. Today with the modernity, today we in the postmodern world, such things are expressed in terms of money as a value and maybe certain negotiations by the parents and family members of the bride. It is not a question of the selling or the purchase of the wife that is a creation of the Western thinking. However, for the Africans, the issue is this. There was a trial of the bridegroom to find out if the bridegroom would be in a position to take care of the bride because that was very important. I remember when I conducted my dowry, it was an antagonistic moment and a serious negotiation of which I think if I failed, I would have not married my wife today. I didn't take it to be negative. I didn't take it to be something beyond the modernity and civilizations. I took it to be something of certain kind of value and a way Africans cherish marriage and how to maintain that marriage and to enable it to be intact. The dowry process is involving the exchange of gifts and goods, but also conversation between the two communities in a manner that the bride would feel free, would feel proud and accepted by the community of the husband-to-be. The process would be long and in some countries such practices arrive in South Sudan among the Nuer, the Dinka. We have the publications, the monumental literature and studies that have been carried out by able personalities, leading scholars in such areas. In the Republic of Kenya, we have communities that still practice customary marriages involving the dowry. However, what does the law say about the family in Kenya? The Constitution of 2010, Article 45, sub Article 1, defines family. It is from this perspective of the Constitution we find that marriage is a voluntary union between a man and a woman. It is a question of the spirit and letter of the constitution that is carried into the bill of marriage in 2013 that was enacted as marriage act number no. four of 2014. The marriage act number no. four of 2014 acknowledges five forms of marriage. First, civil marriages. Second, 
Hindu marriages, third, Christian marriages, fourth, customary marriages, and fifth, Islamic marriages. However, still, the five of them are the only recognized, registered marriages in the Republic of Kenya. Beyond that, then it would not be recognized by the law. Insisting on the customary marriage and looking at what was there since 1967 as the African Customary Marriage Act, we find that the rule of the dowry has been invoked by different civil proceedings during civil litigations by parties across the board. The reason being the dowry was also to create rights and obligations under the Act, but also to offer protection to the marriage, but also protection to the third party, the rights of the child, and also in the best interest of the child. All these ones <clears throat> were not just importation of marriage legal ideas into the African perspective, but they were in existence. That's the reason for which we need to back ourselves up with the documentations, the studies, as well as <clears throat> the information that we get from reliable sources. However, is it still right to speak about the dowry? Does the dowry institution and practice make sense to the modern humans? Do the young people today relate themselves with certain practices? I do think they do, as well as I do think some may not do it because they may not understand its holistic meaning in the family rights. It is not an obligation today, neither does the law make it an obligation. The law does not equally prohibit it. But does it make sense to a young girl today? Does it make sense to the bride and to the bridegroom? The question is about the individual choice. If one chooses among the five forms of marriage, then certain questions of customary norms, rules, and obligations may not be necessary and may not apply. It may not make sense to the modern person. However, the wearing of rings that would be in gold, in silver, or in diamond, is already representing that symbolic bond between the two married parties. Thank you for watching Peter here. This is my opinion. And in this regard, I ask you to share your thoughts. I would be very happy to read what you think about it. You are not compelled to agree with me. You can as well disagree. But we are here to build a strong knowledge that is founded on scholarly work. Thank you for watching this video. And bye for today. Remember to subscribe.